Uh, Thomas came uh, prepared with his uh, scarlet and gray colored glasses. Would Ohio State have beaten Georgia? I think so. Ohio State 45, Georgia 21. Agreed? Oh, man. Um, depends which Georgia. I, I don't know. The Georgia that played Alabama the first time, maybe. The Georgia that played Alabama the second time, I don't know. Um, man, uh, I watched Georgia – we were on a couple of the road games and they would play maybe a noon game and we watch them and they were just dismantling people at times. And uh, their defensive front was like a wrecking crew. And I think a couple of those guys are going to be first round picks. And um, I don't know. I I don't know that their uh, offensive line against Ohio state's uh, defensive line uh, or their uh, Georgia's, Defensive line against Ohio State's offensive line would have been uh, maybe the the greatest matchup at, at times, uh, given what we saw in some of these these games. But uh, I think it would have been interesting. You know, could Georgia and their great defense uh, have kept guys like Jackson Smith, Najigba, and Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave out of the end zone? Could they have uh, gotten after C.J. Stroud and impacted him? Uh, do they stop Travion Henderson cold in the run game? So I think, um, man, it had been a lot of fun if we ever got to see it. Unfortunately, Ohio State didn't hold up their end of the bargain and uh, couldn't, couldn't get into the Final Four, couldn't get into the playoff, and, uh, you know, just never really played at that level. Uh, you know, when, when, the, when they had to, they just never, uh, never got to that level, it didn't seem like. A large portion of college football nation, even outside of Ohio State circles, would have thought Ohio State was one of the four best teams in the country, and me included, but there's a difference between being evaluated as one of the four best or most talented teams in the country and earning the spot. They had Michigan standing right in front of them. They lost by 15 points and got manhandled up front on both sides of the ball. So that's what it was. They will have their shot again in Columbus uh, this year to make amends and set the series straight and uh, the rivalry back to where Ohio State fans think it should be. No doubt. Uh, Obviously, Ohio State fans are counting down the days until they get their hands on Michigan in the horseshoe. And uh, obviously, Jim Harbaugh, his folly of – you know, courting NFL jobs and, and not getting hired for them. Um, you know, unfortunate for him that uh, his dreams were not realized, but uh, maybe uh, maybe next off season. Somebody asked me in my chat last night, how do they expect to recruit at Michigan after that? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know how you recruit after that. I don't know how high school kids and their parents who have any kind of uh, understanding of this whole process can look at at his flirtation with some NFL jobs and not see that, uh, you know, he doesn't want to be the head coach at Michigan anymore and is kind of stuck there because he doesn't have another job right now. So I guess uh, we'll have to to wait and see what happens there. But uh, if you sign up to play at Michigan right now, you are going into it with both eyes open, understanding that uh, he may not be your coach for the full four years that you're at Michigan. And, uh, you know, if people are okay with that and uh, just want to wear the winged helmet and sing hail to the victors and all that, then um, so be it. That's uh, that's where they want to be. I hear it's a decent education if you're into that, too. Uh, now, looking at the 2023 class, way too early to make projections on where these teams are going to land. But Michigan has generally been a top 8 to 15 recruiting class under Jim Harbaugh right now fourth in the Big 10 but ninth in the country with five hard commits uh in addition to Ohio State tearing it up Penn State uh, has had a really good run from 2022 and that seems to be extending into 23 as well uh Penn State's a, a curious situation over there because again James Franklin Steve just brought in his arguably his best recruiting class coming off 11 wins in its last 22 games at Penn state. They've been playing 500 football for the past two seasons, uh, but they bring in, in the talent. They just, they were satisfied enough with James Franklin at seven and six and four and five, the last two years to sign him up for another, what was it? Seven years at some ridiculous rate of top three to four money in the country. Um, but Penn State has yet to break through. 
Yeah, he's their guy. They have hitched their wagon to him. And uh, after the last three or four years of hearing about how one school after another was going to poach him, uh, they backed up the Brinks truck and put a stop to all that and uh, have signed him long term. And uh, he is them and they are him. And, uh, you know, for him, he does have the one win over Ohio State in 2016, which is now going on six years ago. And Ohio State has become this impediment to him uh, getting his team to where he wants it to be and win Big Ten championships again and get into the playoff, which Penn State never has. And maybe this class is is one that can help him get closer to that, I suppose. I, I just think Ohio State is still kind of this, uh, this mountain that uh, they're going to have a hard time scaling or getting over. They did get Drew Aller, the quarterback, uh, from up in the Cleveland area, reputed as one of the top quarterbacks in the country. And Ohio State never really made a move for him, obviously, because they had Quinn Ewers in the fold. And then when he dumped out, they had Devin Brown. So, um, you know, those two guys will be kind of on a similar uh, career path, both coming in as freshmen with a, a, a guy in front of them to be the starter uh, this year. And uh, they'll work behind those guys, and then uh, they'll have a chance to uh, to prove and maybe take the job in 2023, I suppose, uh, to take over as the starters, uh, Brown and Aller. And, of course, Ohio State also has Kyle McCord. So, um, you know, I think Aller and, and his development and where uh, he goes as a football player is kind of tied to how great Penn State can be here in the next several years because he is, in many regards, their big hope for, uh, for the years to come. So, uh, again, um, they've recruited well at Penn State, as you said, consistently top 10, top 15 classes. And yet, uh, you know, Ohio State uh, consistently top five classes have been just almost too much for them uh, to overcome at times. So, uh, you know, we'll see how it goes. Uh, Again, they have one of the great home field advantages in football. And, uh, you know, again, how do you explain them losing at home to Illinois this past year in eight overtimes or whatever that abs absurd game was that uh, that they played? Uh, you just you can't lose a game like that. So obviously Clifford got injured and, and struggled at times at midseason, and that was a, a big part of it. But uh you know, you, you can't you can't go through those long stretches like that and uh, and not not have a quality offense, which you know obviously that was what held that team back at times this past year.